When you're a collector, or if you just have a strong interest in a particular niche, it's almost invariable that you're going to have something that you want that you can't have, usually for a pretty long time, either because it's very expensive or very rare. This is a pretty well-known phenomenon, and I think most people would understand what you meant if you referred to this as a white whale. If the term doesn't seem obvious, if you've read Moby Dick, you can probably infer, but if you haven't, like me, I'll explain it. A white whale is something that you want so badly that you'll pursue it for years and years on end to the end of the earth, as it were, and do almost anything to obtain. Every collector has their own white whales. Uh, for me, an example would be an IBM PS2 Model 25 with a 386 upgrade. The Model 25 has a litany of interesting things about it, not the least is that it's an all-in-one PC, which is unusual for PC clones in general, let alone a first-party IBM machine. So. I'm already pretty interested in it. The problem is that I don't have much use for most Model 25s. IBM built the Model 25 originally with an 8086 CPU, and later they released one with a 286 upgrade, but neither one of those really serves much of a purpose in my collection. I do appreciate older IBM machines, but if I'm going to spend a chunk of money and take up a chunk of physical space in my house or my storage unit or whatever with something, I want it to serve some kind of purpose, and the Model 25 just doesn't really do it for me. Now, IBM never made an official 386 version of the machine as far as I know, but third parties provided upgrade chips that would give it a 386, a 486, or even a Pentium processor, and that's wildly intriguing to me. There's all sorts of stuff I could do with a machine like that. That would occupy a fantastic position in my collection, and it would be a machine that I would use fairly regularly for all sorts of tasks. So, if I was able to get one of those, I'd be willing to drop some serious money on it. I'm not saying I'd go whole paycheck on this, I wouldn't drop a grand on it, but if you had one handy and you'd sell it to me for $300, $350, absolutely, I'd be down for that. That's a chunk of money, but that's a cool machine. But these things almost never show up, and when they do, they go for like four or 500 bucks, and they're usually not working, so like the math just doesn't make sense. So this is something that I'll be searching for for a very, very long time, and when it does eventually fall into my sights, if and when, I'm going to pounce on it and I'll make a very poor decision and my budget for the next couple of weeks is going to be real tough. Now that is a white whale. Now I could dredge up a whole list of my own white whales, but I don't think that's that interesting. I mean, everybody in the retro technology collecting community, everybody in every collecting community has their white whales and they're all stuff usually that you go, oh yeah, one of those, me too. No, let's talk about something else, something that we're probably all familiar with, but don't necessarily have a word for. Going back to the IBM Model 25, I said I don't have a use for one. So does that mean I don't want one? Hell yes I want one! Damn skippy I want one! I would love to have one of those machines. I'm just not willing to spend any money on it. It's a beautiful machine, which doesn't justify how much space it takes up. And it's a piece of IBM history, which doesn't excuse how useless it is to me. And it's a very unusual type of computer, but if I collected all of those, this room would be packed to the rafters with very unusual computers. There were plenty of them. I just can't justify spending significant money on this. I can't justify going out and trying to buy one. I can't justify going to eBay and searching for one and then putting money down on it. I certainly can't justify spending 100 bucks on the machine and then 80 bucks for shipping. But hey, if it were free, I'd take it in a heartbeat. If you came up to me right this second, no, not right this second, because of the pandemic, if you texted me and said you had one and you were gonna drive it over and leave it on my doorstep, if I Venmoed you 50 bucks, you got a deal, bud. I would love to have one of those machines. I would be on cloud nine if I had one of those machines. I've coined a phrase for this kind of desire. I speak to you of the beige whale. It's like a white whale, but not as beautiful or pure. It's like a white whale that didn't bite your leg off. It's like a white whale you wouldn't pursue to the ends of the earth, or even really to the end of the pier, but if it did swim past you, you'd throw a spear at it. Imagine Captain Ahab sitting on a pier and his whale lumbers up alongside him and he doesn't even get up. He just picks up a harpoon and whips it at it, and hey, I hit it. Great. I feel like beige whales outnumber white whales for me at this point. There are just so few things left that really fire my imagination in the retro technology world to the point where I'd be willing to spend whatever I have to get one. I mean, they're out there, but as the name suggests, white whales are usually pretty hard to get a hold of. Even if you have unlimited money to drop on it, a lot of them just aren't available. No one's selling. They only made 50 of them. On the other hand, I spend a tremendous amount of time on eBay looking at stuff, and I frequently have moments where I go, oh, that's an interesting thing. I would love to have that. But then I look at the shipping, and it's coming from Belarus, and all of my motivation evaporates. The price itself was okay, but as soon as I look at that shipping, it's out the window. 
The guidelines for defining a beige whale are something like this. First, it has to be at or below $100. You can adjust this up or down depending on what sort of community you're in. If your sort of thing is cars, this might be more like a grand. If your sort of thing is matchbox cars, this might be more like $10. Second, you will either pay no shipping on the item, or you will only pay shipping on the item. I've received a lot of beige whales in my collection from people who had them and didn't particularly want to profit on them so much as they wanted them to go to a nice home. And they were willing to send them to me, but they weren't willing to pay shipping. And as long as I covered that, they'd be happy to send them to me. The second one here is kind of a cognitive bug. I mean, it happens to everybody who shops in the secondary market. I think people who spend a lot of time on eBay and whatnot, we spend way too much time thinking about how much shipping is costing us. I mean, it's ridiculous to the point where we'll go and look at something and we'll go, oh, that price is great, yeah, but the shipping kills it. But then the seller can just delist the shipping, call it free shipping, roll the shipping price into the sticker price, and we'll go back and go, hey, free shipping. But hey, the beige whale and the white whale, and really all collecting, is frequently about telling yourself little lies. Lies about how valuable something is going to be to you. Lies about how it's going to change your life. You get yourself all worked up over the idea that you're gonna get this thing, and it's gonna be so cool, and like nine times out of 10, you get it, and it is cool for like an hour, and then you put it in a corner and it collects dust for 10 years. It's just the magnitude of the lie that's at stake here. I mean, with a true white whale, some sort of one-of-a-kind piece of equipment, I could lie myself into a corner with one of those. I can convince myself that $500, $800, $1,000, in some rare case, I've never done it, but someday I will, will be worth it because this thing is just so special and it's, it's going to, I'm going to really feel enriched by this. With the beige whale, I cannot convince myself of this. With the beige whale, I look at it and I go, that's nice, but not that nice. But there's still a little bit of a lie there. You know, you still have a little bit of the conviction, the idea that you're going to get this thing and you're, you're going to be pleased to have it. And I, I think at times that perhaps this is more true with the beige ones than the white ones. A lot of white whales are things that are incredibly rare and valuable and you're not going to want to use them very much. The beige whale, on the other hand, is often something that's just uh, kind of unusual. You know, maybe you like it for some reason, but almost nobody else recognizes what is particularly special about it. Or maybe they made a ton of them, so they're not terribly rare, but they're still in a category of device that people just won't drop the price on. Virtually everything in the pro video camera market falls into this category. They're all beige whales. Why is nobody dropping the price on them? Who is buying them? I don't know. I think people just don't want to put the price below $400 because they look at it and just go, well, that feels like about $400. All the same though, a lot of beige whales don't cost that much. And that's one of the other interesting things about them is that unlike the white whale, they're much less about your socioeconomic status. If I wanted a tandy color computer and all the accessories back in 2009, not buying one then didn't have to do with how rare they were or how objectively expensive they were. They never cost that much to collect, but I didn't have a ton of money and I had a very small apartment and I had nowhere to put it. Now I have the money and I have a house where I could store that sort of thing, but I still don't get one because the truth is I never really wanted one all that much. It'd be nice to have though. I don't want to spend a bunch of money on it. I don't want to spend shipping on it. All I want is for it to come into my life and I'm willing to spend a little bit of money to secure it once it's here, but I'm not interested in summoning this thing from halfway across the country just so that it can arrive here with great pomp and circumstance only to be shoved into a corner for eight months. So I decided eh, that might be fun to play with. I would like a ColecoVision. I think they're cool. I do not want to look at a ColecoVision in my house and go, that's $80. So that leaves me back in the perpetual chase. Despite the fact that I have the money to afford a lot of these things, I just stare longingly at them and hope that someday they will be available to me on my terms. And fortunately, it's far more likely that a beige whale will fall into my lap, as it were, than a white whale will, because, and this is one of the things that sucks about white whales, people will usually fight you for them. Consequently, my list of beige whales is full of things that people mostly haven't heard of. They're not necessarily rare, and they certainly weren't expensive, because expensive is what makes people call things valuable to this day. It's what makes people put them up on eBay with Steve Jobs look in the name. Now, I only made this video to tell you about this concept because I expect to reference it in the future. I don't want people to go, what is he talking about? What does this phrase mean? But since you're here, I'd like to share with you a list of my beige whales. I can do this without spilling the beans, as it were, because these are things that are unlikely to ever show up in videos, because the chances I'll ever get any of them are very low for the reasons we discussed. Here are 10 beige whales. A Magnavox video writer. This is actually more like a category of whales. 
These were made throughout the 80s and 90s by a whole bunch of manufacturers and there were a whole bunch of models and they're all essentially 8-bit home computers with built-in screens for the most part running just one program, a proprietary operating system that just does word processing. But they usually have like fairly high resolution graphics and icons and built-in printers and I just think they're super, super neat but I have absolutely nowhere to put one. I mean, I'm never gonna use it. I'm never gonna write anything on it. So if I bought one, it would just be to do a quick demo video about it and I'd have to figure out some place to store it. I couldn't pay a dime for one of these, but I'd take one in a heartbeat. Early digital cameras. We were making digital SLRs as far back as like the mid 90s and they were horrible. The reports I've read, like the first hand stories about how they were used by photojournalists say that these things just didn't work. They're just crap. However, I'm fascinated by them. I used to be a still photographer for like a decade and I loved it and I looked at these things and I, I've, I've seen some of the crunchy photos that used to come out of them and I would just love to have one. But they never go down to a reasonable price. They're always going for like three or four hundred dollars. There's almost always several of them on eBay and they're always overpriced. I mean, I don't know who's buying these. Maybe they're going into actual collections, like people that have glass cabinets with like 1930s Leicas stacked in them. I don't know. Either way, I'm not one of them and I can't afford to spend $300 to have one of these objectively useless cameras that takes horrible crappy photos just for a lark. However, the chassis design on these things is frequently so beautiful that if someone offered me one for 30 to 50 bucks, I think I'd snap it up. This bizarre 1970s Japanese modem tester. I have no idea why this thing is designed the way it is. It looks like a Roland drum machine or like a Korg Volca or one of those little calculator looking synthesizers from Teenage Engineering, I think. I can't imagine why you'd need this in this beautiful, elegant, pocket-sized little chassis. I mean, this is the sort of thing I think you'd use in a lab environment. So I don't know why they designed it like this, but I would like to have one. Like, I would love to have this thing on my shelf, but I know that I would never do anything with it. So I couldn't justify more than like 10 bucks. Certainly not the 250 plus that it went for. Professional grade TV VCR combos. I know there's a ton of really cheap consumer ones. They're all cheap as far as I know, and they're made by like Quasar and Westinghouse or whoever, and I wouldn't take one of those if you gave it to me for free. I'd get upset at you. I would throw it away in front of you. The professional ones, on the other hand, are beautiful, and although I don't think they do anything particularly special, I mean, they're just tape decks built into VCRs, the design language is the one that should have been used for all tape decks that are built into VCRs, and just on those grounds alone, I'd love to have one of these. I should note the only reason I don't want one of these is because every single one is either broken or will be broken soon, so I would just be getting a boat anchor. But if you were standing in front of me with one that was on its last legs, I'd give you 50 bucks for it, stupidly, knowing full well that it's going to break within a week. This Akai video camera. It's completely unnecessary to me. I would bet that it has the exact same image quality as all my other 80s tube video cameras, but this one is just breathtaking. The industrial design is spectacular and the color palette is inspired, but the only reason I would be buying it is as a sculpture. I'm not sure why that bugs me so much. A lot of people will spend 30, 50, 60, 300 dollars a lot more on a sculpture. I should be able to be cool with that, but hey, I just can't do it. I'm too practical. The irony is that this one isn't even overpriced. It's 60 bucks after shipping coming from the UK. So like this thing is going for pennies and I still can't get myself to buy it. The particular specimen that's on eBay right now is also missing the proprietary video cable without which it's utterly useless. But I keep asking myself if it had the cable and it were 20 bucks cheaper, would you buy it? And the answer is still no. Any broadcast camera from Thompson. Their industrial design is the strangest thing I've ever seen in this market. Their color palette is beautiful. The thing looks like a Ford Explorer Eddie Bauer edition got loose and turned itself into a camera to escape detection. I have no use for one of these things. The cameras I own have the same or better capabilities and I don't need what any of these do. If I bought one of these, I would never even turn it on. I would just hang it up on the wall and look at it. This Panasonic pop-up television which requires no explanation. I mean, look at it. I don't need that, but I want it. A MyTac Viso MPC-160V, Laser Compact XT, or any of the Russian compact computers that comes in a keyboard wedge. These are fascinating to me because they are, again, IBM PC all-in-ones, but this time, instead of having the monitor built in, they've got the keyboard built in. I already own several of those, but I love them so much, I would like to own all of them. I actually want to own 
all the keyboard wedge computers that have ever been made. These ones are just particularly intriguing because they're PC based. Of course, I have less than no use for them because not only are they 8088 PC based, the only things I could do with an 88 PC that would be interesting would probably require hardware add-ons that can't be installed into these. Nonetheless, I would spend well, more money than I should on one, but I'm not willing to spend the amount that they ever go for. This video text editor, I'm not even entirely sure what this thing is for or whether it can do anything on its own. It's certainly missing most of the pieces required to make it work, and I doubt there will ever be one on eBay that has all those pieces because I would guess there were like 10 of these. Based on the pictures on the screen and the eBay photos, however, this object is so much my thing that I would just want to be near it. I, I don't need to do anything other than turn it on and just look at that picture, and I think I'd be good, and that's why I don't have one and will never have one and can never be allowed to have one. Is it a white whale or even a beige one if you secretly hope that someone else will kill it before you can? And finally, in a shocking twist for people who know me well, a beige G3 Mac of the Moeller variety. I'm actually not that much of a Mac person. I don't get too fired up about them anymore. I have a couple Macs. I'd like to collect a couple more. There's things I do with them, but I find them fairly mundane at this point, and I don't get too excited about very many of them anymore. But the Moeller has always captured my imagination for some reason. It's an all-in-one, which you know I'm excited about. It's got a gigantic, beautiful screen. It's got all sorts of storage. It'll run relatively old and relatively new Mac OS. I mean, it's just an incredible machine, but it weighs a ton, costs a ton, and takes up a ton of space, and I have other machines that do what it does. I can't justify spending really any substantial amount of money on this, but if somebody had one for a hundred bucks, I couldn't resist. It would be a stupid idea to get one. It would be a terrible idea to get one. My girlfriend would be furious at me, and I would just be nodding along with her. Yes, absolutely. Poor choice. I'm a bad boy, and I would still do it. So there's my 10 whales, and I wouldn't really call it a top 10 list because these are all about as appealing to me. I mean, I could rank them, but it's sort of moot because I don't have room for any of them in my life or my budget. What is important, though, is that I have room for them in my heart. If you enjoyed this, please subscribe so I know that you're interested in this kind of video. Uh, if you really enjoyed this, consider supporting me on Patreon, which is linked in the description. I'd like to shout out all the people who have joined my upper Patreon tiers since my last video, and that list is... Uh, Malexifer, Fraxel, Gloomy JD, Peak, Hey Peak, Foss, Roger Woodley, Tamara Westwood, Allison Withanel, and Adam Stauber. I am incredibly grateful for the faith that all of you are placing in me. I am incredibly grateful for everybody who is supporting me on Patreon, and I'm grateful to everybody who is watching this video. Thank you so much. Professional grade TV VCR combos.